I'm Martin Shanahan. And I'm Paul Flynn. Over the next few weeks, we're taking our Surf and Turf Challenge all around the country to create signature dishes for each area. I love a point. But there can be only one winner, and I'm cooking the surf. I'm cooking the turf. And tonight, we're joining the aristocracy because we've been invited to host our challenge in Mayo's magnificent Westport House. Do I look good? Oh, I'm, I'm loving it. <laughs> but I keep my feet on the ground by going back to the way our ancestors cooked. I'm out of my comfort zone today. I'm not going to be in the kitchen that much. I have a great time tracking down some fantastic land. Things going to turn into Keith Floyd. The pressure is really on in the kitchen. Too many cooks by the broad, right? But who will the people of Westport vote for? Surf or turf? <laughs> We're at Westport House, and Martin and I are meeting our adjudicator for this challenge, Leslie Emerson, who's a passionate promoter of Mayo's food producers. How are you? Paul, good to see you. I've nearly run in there. Yeah, I see that, you have a pep in your step, though. Hi. Leslie, how are you? Nice to see you. Hello, Leslie. Oh, lovely to meet you both, and welcome to Westport House. Would you like to step inside? Can we have a look around? Perfect. Love to. It's like your house, Martin. I know, isn't it? Yeah. Come here, Paul. I know what kind of a house you think I live in. This place is amazing. Hi, Leslie. How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. <laughs> Gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to Sheelan Brown. Sheelan's the eldest daughter of the current Marcus of Sligo, Jeremy. This is Martin Shannon. Martin, how are you? Sheelan, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Sheelan. Sheelan. Sheelan yeah. Impressive room. Yeah, no, this is actually the long gallery which um, contains all the family portraits. You've got to do the old man. Oh, whoa, look at him, man. Eh? Think here. Do oh, I look good? Oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm loving it. You were born to me in a house. Like I know. Sheelan has us under pressure. Come on, hungry. <laughs> Westport House dates back to the early 18th century, but the Brown's family ancestors have lived on this site for over 300 years. This place really is one of Ireland's national treasures. This is the dining room, the large dining room, the original dining room of the house, designed by James Wyatt, and it is probably the most spectacular room in the house. We're going to cook in this room. I can't believe that Sheelan is prepared to let us. But it turns out there's a bit of fighting spirit in her. But, but Sheelan, something I'm just looking out here at Clare Island, and it's just, when I was at school, all I, you know, a big part of history was learning about Grace O'Malley, Gro yeah. Grony Whale, and yeah. you're a direct descendant of Grace O'Malley, the Pirate Queen. Something I'm very proud of. Um, Grace O'Malley is my 15th great grandmother. She must have Grace O'Malley's wild streak. I just hope nothing goes wrong. Gentlemen, you are here for a reason. And your challenge is to cook two dishes, one from the surf, one from the turf, working with the very best of local ingredients and the very best of local people. And in 24 hours, at noon tomorrow, we will meet back here in this room and we will have a gathering of local people who will vote to see which is the best dish, surf or turf. So, what do you think? Well... Big challenge ahead, I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. But that room, don't be yeah. setting fire to it now, okay? See <laughs> yeah. so you, Martin, have the gel in and everything now. <laughs> Westport, to me, is a fantastic town. I've walked around it, right? The amount of restaurants, food shops, fish shops, butchers, it's just brilliant, you know? So I think there'll be great food here. I, I think these people know about their food. Now, that'll be a challenge for me, right? Because, really, I'm going to have to create something extra special, right? And probably as well, Paul, you know, after the last result... He's probably going to be pushing a bit harder, you know? So i got to be on my toes. I have to be careful. I got my ass kicked the last time. I have my pride, you know? So i got to simplify. i got to find the right producer. And the way to do that is to get in my bike. I'm heading for the Greenway, a 42-kilometre cycle track which features the best of Mayo's food producers. I just hope I don't have to travel the whole 42k to find them. I have a much more relaxed morning ahead of me. I'm meeting Colin Mahan, and he helps people reconnect with their ancient pasts with his Mock Tira bushcraft courses. I need to get some wild salad leaves for my signature dish. And you know what? He's here to make sure I don't get poisoned. So this little fella here is, um, is violet. It comes violet. out in the early springtime. Oh, yeah. um, common violet, or dog violet, is, is, it's, it's usually called. And uh, all parts edible. To me, it's almost spinach. Mm. It, uh, you know, it's lovely, it's lovely. Mm. This is something I'm more familiar with. Wild rocket. It's so pungent, so peppery. Yeah. Wow. 
And it's, again, look, it's inspired me. I think I'm definitely going to, going to pick this and put it in. Mm. And... Back on Ross Talk Beach, and Cullum is teaching me some more bushcraft skills. I'm better than any fire light on. Amazing, huh? It's inspiring. He's cooking the sea trout using only what nature has given him. Yeah. But that reminds me, I still have to find my main ingredient. Colm said to me there that there is a, a salmon research centre here in Westport, so maybe that'll help me. Now, what Colm done with the fish was quite interesting, but really, for the competition, right, I don't know if I do that, will people, will people like it? Maybe I'll do a version of it. So. I guess I'm off to the research centre to try and find some salmon or something to go with the salad, you know? Right, here it is. I'm told this butcher is one of the best in the country. Sean, is it? That's me, Sean Kelly. Very pleased to meet you. You're a famous man in these parts. How do you feel after cycling the seven miles from Westport? Well, I'll tell you, I feel pretty good, especially when I come into a shop like this. I'm excited and I need your advice. Okay. Because I want to get something really, really special. I'm thinking lamb because it's all over the place on the hillsides in Mayo. And can you help me out? Okay, if you want to win, I'll show you something. Yeah. That's the fella. This is the fella you're going to win with. Yeah, it's a beautiful. Lamb. That's, we, we call that a French trimmed rack of lamb. It's a rack of lamb. That's spring lamb, I can tell. Come on, I'll show you the field. You're going to show me a field? Yes, no, I'm going to show you the, the, the countryside where the lambs are coming out of. Good grief. And then you'll understand what I'm thinking about. Are we going to hop on a bike? No, you have enough cycling. Oh, good guy, I have a sore axe, I'm I, telling I, you, I can't cycle anymore. Seven miles is enough for me for a day. You don't have to convince me to head out somewhere like this. These are hill tech sheep. Sean has an interesting theory about them. When I was talking to you in the shop, I said the reason, and I'm going to give you the reason why I think lamb around this part of the world is the best. Which way is the tree blowing? That's the westerly wind, I'd say, is it? Yes, and, and why I'm showing you this, it, it's painted by a local artist called Clear. Yeah. Right? There is the Atlantic Ocean Clube, mm. and the Bavarian wind is coming in this way, and it's been in the salt water. Of, yeah. You see, and I maintain when the salt water hits the land, yeah. and the lambs eat that grass, or the yeah. cattle, it's a different thing you're getting. Yeah. It's a different taste you're getting. Yeah. And when you taste the lamb, mm. you'll see where I'm coming from. You're a passionate man. I believe in it. So this is where the fish come down into the trap, and uh, Joe Rogan is down in the trap having a look. This is the Salmon Research Centre in Newport. Russell Poole tells me this is one of only six places in Europe which documents wild salmon. I reckon I'm bound to get some fish here. So Martin, the, the fish that on the traps outside come in through the sluice and they're held in here until we let them go. Right. So we get a chance to, uh, to see them, to count them and to do the science that we need to do on them. So this, for example, is a two-year-old salmon. That's two years old. That's two years old and it's going to sea for the first time. And when it's at sea, it'll probably grow about four to six pounds in weight in the same time. And that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a salmon that size. Well, it's too early here because the young ones are still going out. Uh, it will be July before we get the uh, adults coming back. That's the bad news. But they're doing some amazing work here. Just look how much they can tell from one fish scale. Well, I've been lucky because Russell has taught me here at the Marine Institute that there's a great organic sea trout farm down the road, yeah? And to me, organic sea trout is the closest thing to wild salmon. So that's where I'm going. I'm going for the sea trout. Coming up, I bite off a bit more than I can chew when I choose my commie chef. It's not the cameras that make me stress. It's you that are making me, uh, that is making me stress. And I wonder if getting back to wild cooking is all it's cracked up to me. All right, come on. How are we looking? OK. And Westport delivers its verdict. I have been invited to cook our surf and turf challenge in Mayo's magnificent Westport house. We have 24 hours to find the best produce before our signature dishes are served up to 20 local people. I've had a great morning. 
finding some wild salad leaves, and getting back to nature. But I still have to find my main surf ingredients. I've been out on my bike, and I found my turf ingredient, some wonderful Hill Tex lamb. Now I want to taste it, and I have to say, I like Sean Kelly's style. Now, Paul, we're going to do this right. <laughs> we're going to do it right. OK, hold it. If it's going to be done, we're going Rory. to do it right. You think, yeah. Rory's so disapproving now, you know, because he's saying Flynn's going to turn into Keith Floyd. Sean, they're going to love this. Oh, man. Cheers. Put it that lamb looks great. You're definitely ahead of me because I still have to get my main ingredient. So I'm heading to Koran Blue Organic Trout Farm in Mulrenny. And I've just realized that Tom Doherty and his crew supply my restaurant in Kinsale. But Tom, my customers, which is amazing, they tell me when they eat your organic sea trout, right, they tell me it's the closest thing they recall to wild salmon. Uh, the process that we use with the organic feed is the best quality feed you can get and the low stocking densities in the cages, and we don't use anti foul in the nets. There's, there's lots of things, like criteria we have to meet to yes. be certified organic. Organic. Koran Blue exports its organic trout all over Europe. And isn't it great to see that these guys are able to make a living here in Mayo yeah. by yeah. producing this fantastic yeah. fish? Yeah. These trout sure are hungry. This is where you're, huh? We'll catch a this is where you're catching. Now, oh, I'm looking forward to this. Oh, probably one of the easiest fish I've ever Whoa. caught. <laughs> Whoa, I think he's fresh now. Uh, <laughs> still kicking. He's still kicking indeed, yeah. He is, look at that. Look, oh, the beauty. Look at that. The colour on them, look, stunning. That was a great experience. Out with that farm trout, you know. And the people of Westport are now going to realise they have a signature dish. And that trout, to me, and they're going to realise, is as good as any wild salmon. <laughs> Westport Farmers Market is on today in this boxing club. I have to find someone who can cook to help me win this challenge tomorrow. And this guy, Red Cabot, could be exactly who I need. Red, I'm loving your stall. I'm loving, I, lo I love pestos and dressings and all that sort of thing. But what drew me over was the wild garlic. Well, I'm well used to the larger fronds. Yeah. And I've really used, oh, that's lovely. It's like, it's like a small flavour, but the length of it is uh, long. It's like a good wine. The finish is good. Do you think it'll go with lamb? Do you think it'll go with lamb? Yeah, why not? Are you doing anything tomorrow? Uh, no, I'm free tomorrow. I need a helper. Would you be my helper? So I come down there and help you cook off and, yeah. and help you win the competition? Yeah. So I was going to do risotto. I woke up this morning filled with confidence. I was yeah. going to do lamb and a wild garlic risotto was what I was thinking. Yeah. But now I'm thinking Irish people like spuds, you know? Oh, or I might. Fun. They do, don't they? Am I mad to be changing my dish with less than 12 hours to go? I'm sure Martin isn't having these dilemmas, but I have to play it cool. Huh. How are you? How yourself? How are you? I'm good, yourself? I'm good. I had a great yeah. day. Had you? What you want? I'd love a pint. Yeah, it's nice. Phil, Feels good. Pint of Guinness for Martin, please. Well, I met some great people, but I won't go any further. How was your day? <laughs> There's no getting info out of you, is there? Oh, there. I will, I will, gently, it'll seep out, but it takes a while. I'm going to have to torture you again. <laughs> again yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what I'm stunned by. It's just the area and everything yeah. that's here. It's really, I had a mighty day, mighty day. Yeah. I was cycling. I was in a field with four-legged animals. He was I cycling? Said, I was cycling. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd love to see that. <laughs> so, cheers. Good cheers, luck. Martin. Cheers. Here's to Westport. Here's to Westport, and mm -hmm. may the best men win. Mm -hmm. As long as it's me. <laughs> <laughs> It's the morning of the cook-off, right? I'm a bit under pressure because obviously, look, I mean, I'm, I'm out of my comfort zone today. I'm not going to be in the kitchen that much because I think I'm going to go with Cullum's idea of building the fire outside the Westport house. I suppose we can't build it in there because I might put it in fire, you know? So Paul has gone up to the house already, right? So he's probably above there now leaning, yawning, you know? So i got to get to a hardware store, right? i got to get a grate and i got to come up with some way of cooking the fish on the open fire. Hello? Ha, how's it going? Point. I'd say, look, that might be the job now. Show me. Yep. Likely. Yeah. So we put the fire under it. We put the grate and the fish on top. Okay, good man. Do you know what? You're a star. So 
and gentlemen, it is the day of reckoning. In exactly two hours, we will have 20 tasters in this room from the local Westport area, and they are going to judge which is the better. Is it the surf or is it the turf? You have two hours, two hours to do your very best, starting from now. We've only just started, and I've got a problem already. So after yesterday's foraging, put the herbs in the fridge overnight. But look, I'm looking at them and I don't know, they're just... They're okay, but they're not really the best quality. Great, Cullum's here and he's got some lovely cedar planks to cook my fish on. Hopefully he can help me to get some more wild leaves. There's woods over here. No, I'm not familiar with these woods, right. I have to say that. We don't know what we'll find, yeah. but it'll be good. Brilliant. Come on, so okay. come on. Back at the house, and I'm still undecided about what to cook. But it turns out Red, my commie, has very strong feelings on this. I was going to do a wild garlic and apple risotto, simple as that, with lamb chops. But the mere fact it's a risotto, and people, they kind of have a bad impression of risotto, as you do. But let's just keep it simple, right, OK? Your head's going everywhere. Let's get some really good food. Uh, we're in Mayo here. We've got great lamb. We've got great spuds. We've got great wild garlic. Let's keep it simple, and let's win this one. OK. You're like my life coach. <laughs> Money. Money, man. So that was right, so it's brilliant. But of course, between the fire and the fresh herbs there, right, I forgot I have nobody to help me in the kitchen. Now, I, earlier I was talking to Sheila and her sister runs a cafe here, I believe, somewhere around the house. So I need to go off and try and find her. I shouldn't have cancelled the gym membership. I've got my own problems. A tour has arrived into the kitchen. And this links the 1800 extension to the 1778 extension. Maybe they can decide my dish for me. Risotto or spuds? Spuds! <laughs> Red was right. I've managed to find Alana, the youngest of the Brown sisters, and she's happy to help me out. So can you pick up the bread for me? I can indeed, okay, And yeah, I can trust yeah. you. I know I can. Thank God that sucks. I'm making an aioli sauce for my spots, and Red is giving me his expert advice on how to present. This is wet and, and oily, and that's wet and oily, and yeah. that's a different colour from this. Yeah. So I think keep them separate. OK. You know what I mean? Right. If I lose this now because of you, I swear I'm going to haunt you. And he's not finished yet. But I mean, how many more flavours are you going to put on here? Look, buzz off. You wanted to say, you wanted to have the, uh, the rules made. Just go away. Thank you. See that? We're in tune. Alana and I are finally getting cooking. But you know what? I won't be here for long. My one, I suppose, right, is all about indoor-outdoor, right? OK? So I'm going to be here, I'm going to be prepping the fish, I'm going to be gone out of the house, I'm going to... Oh, yeah, look, look. Are you going away He's again? watching. I'm going away again, yeah. I'm going, up, I'm going up town there, right? I'm going to have a nice long lunch and a glass of wine and, you know, and when I come back, you'll have my dinner, you'll have my lunch ready, will you? I will. And I'm still getting lessons from my commie. Well, you're doing well. You're, you're, you're naturally, you like to cook with a little bit of stress, don't you? Just a little bit. But I could get... <laughs> well, the thing is that you're nothing, and it's not the cameras that make me stressed, it's you that are making me, uh, yeah, you making know, me you're, stressed. You're, you're going to do a good job. You, you, I'm not saying you care more about your food than Martin, but you know, you like, you're, you're, you're into it. I want Alana to make a French vinaigrette with some maple syrup, which I'll pour over my organic citrus with our wild salad leaves. Now, leave it down there, leave it down there, and just you, do it with two hands, OK? We have another one, it's okay. It's okay, you stay out of the way. <laughs> Get out. Get out of the way. <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay. And remember now, look, don't look over to the other side, right? Because those guys, they're not really nice guys, right? And Paul is jealous of me now at the moment, right? Because I got the good looking one, right? So, okay. Well, I have the shirt, though. You know, <laughs> she's, got, she's going to be lured over. So, look, away we go. I can't believe it. The tasters are here already. And I'm running back outside to cook my fish. I just hope Alana will be okay in her own. Fred, do you want to help me? Yeah. Okay. I'm in for a rude surprise. Oh. Don't tell Martin. No, we won't tell Martin. What's he doing? Oh, sorry, no, go on, go on. Don't, don't let him touch it because that's what happens. Uh, Too many cooks by the broad. Red and I have really pulled this together, and it's just as well because the jury's just on their way back in. I just hope my fish is ready. All right, come. How are we looking? OK.
Where the heck is Martin? Are the tasters going to have to order fish and chips? Sorry, guys. Sorry. Did somebody order a takeaway? Did somebody order a takeaway? It's cooked to perfection. Okay, gentlemen, gotta hurry you up. We're nearly there. Time is almost up. Can we have a countdown? You can. From, and from ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Stop cooking! For Westport's signature dish, I'm serving Sean Kelly's lamb chops with wild garlic pesto and roasted baby potatoes with aioli. And I'm serving Quran Blue organic chows on artisan bread with some wild salad leaves and a drizzle of Alana's vinaigrette. Well, what do you think of this? Delicious. Yes. Very good. And this one, these are these things. Is that the wild garlic? Wild garlic. Oh, wild garlic. This one all around the house. Very nice. Very, very good. He got, a, he got the best out of it. In all fairness, all. the best out of it. Time for Sean Kelly's pet lab. Lamb is beautiful. Um, you won't get any more Westport than, than local lamb and the white garlic. So often I have to choose, I think. They're both just so good. They're so different. Mayo lamb can't beat it. Mm -hmm. Have you made your minds up? Yes. Size is different, Martin. Don't worry about okay, that now. Thank you. This is very pretty. The lamb looks fantastic. Absolutely. Well. I can't with my mouth full. <laughs> That's gorgeous. Mm. There's a man, Sean Kelly's did, lamb. Did I say that in camera? About meat, you did, yeah. It's on record now. Are you ready? Have you made your mind up? Please cast your votes. Now. And the score is... Five votes for fish and... Oh, that's for the same as well done, well done. Well done. Well done. Genuine. Well done. Well done, guys. I, I, I am, well, ecstatic. <laughs> but I, I'm relieved more than anything else because, you know what, just, he won, it would have been two nil up and then I'd, I'd have come back from that and if he won the third time, it's very hard to claw things back. We've had such a magnificent time here. But at the end of the whole thing, it's quite tense. Did I expect Chow to beat lamb? No, truthfully I didn't, right? Lamb is, is one of the most popular dishes, right? One of the most popular foods in Ireland, right? But I got Chow out to the people, and that's my job. That's my objective, right? And if I can compete, and if he wins 15-5 every time, good luck to him, you know? It's not about the winning, it's about the competing, and it's about the education. <laughs> You're talking to your... <laughs> Recipes from this series and many more Surf and Turf classics are now available in our new book, Martin and Paul's Surf and Turf, out now. Next week at half past eight, the chefs take to Bally Vaughan where an outdoor oven and a spit roast are part of the challenge. Martin and Paul tackle the Surf and Turf once again then. But next tonight, the main evening news.